In the southeast corner of Washington, 25 miles north of Richland, a state-of-the-art facility is being designed and constructed to immobilize millions of gallons of radioactive waste, the product of nearly 50 years of plutonium production. This waste treatment plant, located at the Department of Energy's Hanford site, is an unprecedented engineering, construction, and environmental challenge. The Department of Energy's Office of River Protection has selected Bechtel National Incorporated, along with principal subcontractor Washington Group International, to design and build a nuclear waste treatment facility to convert radioactive liquid waste currently stored in underground tanks to solid glass, a process called vitrification. Vitrifying hazardous waste is necessary to isolate it from the environment. Of the 177 underground tanks at Hanford, more than one-third have leaked, contaminating the local groundwater. Due to the close proximity to the mighty Columbia River, the lifeblood of the Pacific Northwest is at risk. The waste treatment plant includes three processing facilities, an analytical laboratory, and about 20 other support-related structures dedicated to operations, maintenance, and administration. Major construction of the complex began in 2002. The facility is expected to be fully operational in 2019. The engineering team is using 3D computer technology to design the facility, moving design directly from the computer screen to the field. This approach saves time and money, avoiding some costly design and construction mistakes inherent in traditional methods. The waste treatment plant will be the world's largest of its kind, and designing, building, and operating such a facility requires a large and talented workforce. The vitrification process combines tank waste with glass forming materials. These materials are heated to 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. As the molten mixture cools, the chemical and radioactive components of the waste are immobilized in the glass logs. Within these glass logs, the radioactive waste is suspended and cannot leach out into the environment even as it continues to decay to relatively safe levels over hundreds or thousands of years. The resulting glass logs will be stored at Hanford. Eventually, the logs containing the highest levels of radioactivity will be entombed at a National Nuclear Waste Repository. The waste treatment plant includes three process facilities. The high-level waste vitrification facility, the Low Activity Waste Vitrification Facility, and the Pre-Treatment Facility. Each of the three process facilities has a 40-year operating life. Construction of the plant requires large quantities of concrete, steel, piping, and other materials. Building the plant will take more than 254,000 cubic yards of concrete, enough to fill over 100 Olympic-sized swimming pools and over 896,000 feet of piping, enough pipe that if laid end-to-end -end, would stretch over 170 miles. The pre-treatment facility is about the same size as four football fields, two long by two wide and about 12 stories high. The facility will separate tank waste into low activity and high level waste streams, which will be fed to the appropriate facility for vitrification. The facility can receive and treat about 12,000 gallons of waste per day. The main elevation of the facility houses the hot cell, where most of the separation process occurs. The hot cell contains the cesium ion exchange columns ultrafiltration equipment, evaporator reboilers, evaporator recirculation pumps, and various mechanical process pumps. The process equipment in the hot cell 
will be connected to the tanks and other equipment by a series of jumpers. Jumpers are remotely removable connectors for fluids, gases, and electricity. The high-level waste facility is about the same size as two football fields six stories high. The facility houses two melters, each with the capacity to vitrify about three metric tons of waste each day, enough to fill one canister per day. Each canister is two feet wide by 14 and a half feet tall. Canisters enter the HLW facility at the zero elevation and are transported by remotely operated equipment for placement to receive vitrified waste from one of two melters located above on the main operating floor. Once the canister is filled, it is remotely transported to the finishing line for decontamination prior to export from the facility. Also located on the main operating floor of the facility are the melter caves and export airlocks. The melter caves house the melters and associated equipment. The caves each hold one melter. Viewports allow personnel to monitor and perform remote operations within the cave. The low activity waste facility will be comparable to one football field in length, one and a half times in width, seven stories tall. The low activity waste facility has two melters located within a single gallery. Each waste container is four feet wide by seven and a half feet tall and holds about six metric tons of glass. Containers enter the facility at the three-foot elevation and are transported by rail and crane to the minus 21-foot elevation to receive vitrified waste. Once full, the containers are transported to the facility finishing line where they undergo decontamination. Local shielding of the melters allows hands-on maintenance rather than the use of remotely operated handling equipment. The Waste Treatment Plant Project provides a safe, efficient, and proven means to immobilize Hanford's tank waste and protect the environment and Columbia River. The WTP buildings will be designed in modular form for future use and expansion. The plant is designed and constructed to meet all state and federally mandated emissions requirements. When operations begin in 2019, the facility will be the world's largest nuclear waste treatment plant. To ensure that the project remains on time and within budget, the WTP management team is using time-proven design processes and technologies to achieve this unprecedented environmental accomplishment. The Hanford Waste Treatment Plant is utilizing 21st century technology ready for today.